Job 42. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. Great plea to God. God cannot sin. God cannot lie. But in general, God can do anything and everything. That no thought can be withholded from thee. That's scary. And a lot of people think <clears throat> when they're going before God, they think, you know, if I commit murder, if I take a knife, I take a gun, I kill somebody, okay, I'm going to be judged. They don't realize if I think about doing it. Jesus said, if a man looketh upon a woman to lust after in his heart, he has not done anything to that woman. You're guilty of sin. And the fact is that the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ for the saved, we will be judged for our thoughts and you can't hide no thoughts from God. You might hide, you may hide them from your parents, you may hide them from your spouse, you may hide them from your pastor, you may hide them from the teacher, but you're not going to hide our thoughts from God. If we confess our sins, including our thoughts, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteous thoughts, our sin. <clears throat> Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Counsel's good when you get advice from somebody who knows what they're doing. <clears throat> Therefore has I, Job, uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Job's like, okay, God, I had no idea. Listen, I was just in pain. I was suffering. I had these three guys here. They're tag teaming me. A lie who gave me a little light, and I didn't realize what my sin was. I'm in pain and agony, and I didn't know, Lord God, you were behind the scenes. And we all don't know. We have no idea of pain and suffering and sorrow. It can be God, it can be the devil, it can be our own selves. And the devil may be trying to destroy and stop us, and God may be trying to build a strength and, and reveal sin in, in, our, in ourselves, and ourselves could be just doing things we ought not to be stupidly. <clears throat> we don't know. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, allergy. And when we do think we know, we don't even know. I think a lot of ideas we got from the Bible, we're going to find when we get to glory, it's wrong. One of the things that man don't know, he doesn't know about gravity. And when we get to glory, God say, hey, that was nothing. Let me show you what gravity was. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Got to get to the point is when we're dealing with God in the Bible, there are things we don't know. The proper answer to give to somebody, if you don't know the answer, I don't know. Don't make up one. <clears throat> it's called a lie. Here I beseech thee, God, and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of my ear, and now my eyes see of thee. Uh-oh, we got trouble. Jesus says, no man has seen God at any time. God is the spirit. They that worship must worship him in spirit and truth. Moses and the, and the elders of Israel in Exodus, uh, I think it's 19, around Exodus 20, they saw God. How can you see God when Jesus says you can't see God? He's a spirit. They must have saw Jesus Christ. Because unlike the Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ says, I am the image of God. God told Moses, you can't see me. If you see me, you're going to die. <clears throat> so here's something they see God. So God's a spirit. Wherefore I, Job, abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Look at the repentance. I am nothing, God. I am just dirt. Job has right there in verse 6, he has repented, a severe repentance of his heart. And we'll see it in chapter in verses 7 on. Oh, uh, Then I had to go through this all this long prayer. Don't, from the heart, God did not record to us what Job's heart really is. Job's like, listen, I, okay, I'm worthless and vile. God, Job's heart and Job's conscience has been speaking to God the whole time. 
And when God finally gives Job to the point to speak, he says, listen, I'm nothing, I repent. God says, okay. <clears throat> when I witness to somebody, and I've had people who have gotten saved, I will tell them, okay, I will help you pray. Or you pray yourself. But when we come to the part, I want you to confess your sins to God. I don't want you to... <coughs> <clears throat> I don't want you to say anything to me. You don't confess it to me. You don't confess it to man. And I've had many times where, where they've they gotten saved. They're praying to God. And there's a long silence. I have no idea what they said. But I'll tell you what they're doing. They're doing the same thing Job's done. They're repenting. As I said, confess your sins to God. You don't need to know what their sins are. And only somebody, well, you know, I've done this. Is it for the learning we're doing? Is it involved what we're talking about? Or is it something out far in the picture? Because I don't want to hear it. And it doesn't have to do with the learning that we're doing. Like I've seen it in prison. Man. If I can't use it for the lesson, listen, just tell God right now on your own. You don't tell me. You don't tell any other man. You tell God. Get it right with God. And you don't have to tell anybody. Now, somebody, you know, we're talking about something and say, hey, yeah, I've done that. Okay, you're giving it for a testimony. Really shouldn't. But you always don't have to have a verbal written down what you've done. <clears throat> and it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, chapter 39, 40, 41, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, that's one of the three guys, my wrath is kindled against thee. Uh-oh, God's angry. And against the two friends. He doesn't even say their names. <laughs> and ye have not spoken of me, the thing which is right, as my servant Job has said. Has. What you guys wrote, you guys lied about me. And it was recorded. Now, I said before, when we first started chapter, I think it's four, the first guy that speaks up, their illustrations Yes, darkly you can apply them, but you can't apply them to God. And you can't apply them to Job. And you can't apply them to Job and God. As, a, as the contents of the book of Job, they said a lot of right things, but not to the according of the book of Job. Um, if somebody's dealing with the death of somebody and... You know, I came up saying, you know, all liars, God is angry with them. Well, I said the truth. But that's not in context of the situation. And God has found Eliphaz and the two friends. You guys are just wrong. And I am angry with you. And imagine what God's going to do with preachers and teachers and, and evangelists and men who proclaim to speak the words of God and don't and are thieves. They are wolves in sheep clothing, and they are false apostles, they are false disciples, they are false teachers. God is angry with them. Because they say things that is not true, like Eliphaz, you know, give us a dime, we'll give you 20 dimes. That's not true. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job. Look at that. Look at God claiming Job. What happens when I repent and get right with God? God says, okay, we got that servitude back. I'm in back of good testimony of you. Now, these men have spoken. They had nailed Job down to the ground. They, they had rubbed to himself in his pain and misery. And God said, you take your offering and you bring it to that very man that you lied about. That's humbling. And God is breaking their pride. And offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job, again, my servant Job, shall pray for you. For him, Job, will I accept. <clears throat> so look at look how well God is pleased with Job now. You bring your offering to, to Job. He's going to pray. And I am going to listen to his prayer about you. Job becomes a type of Jesus Christ. The nation of Israel is going to be redeemed when Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent.
least I deal with you after your folly. If you don't have Job, a type of Jesus Christ, interceding for you, you're going to be charged with folly, foolishness, and the wrath of God be upon you, and you'll, you will suffer because you have not the Son, John the Baptist said. Jesus is praying for the saints today, right now. And when Jesus Christ comes, if you don't take Jesus Christ, the nation of Israel, and you don't believe on the Messiah, man, he's coming, he's going to divide the sheep, John chapter 10, Israel, from the goats, the sheep go into the millennium in with their king of kings and lord of lords, and the goats go off to hell. Who are the goats? The ones that don't bring the offerings, the ones that don't appease and don't seek Jesus. Let me see if I got something back here real quick. Um, oh boy, how do Of course, you know, I can't turn my page in my Bible. Uh, I was just trying to find out what Job meant. I don't have that. Okay, so. Only repentance God will take, Eliphaz, and your friends, is from Job. The only repentance God will take for salvation is the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Least I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me, God, the thing which is right, like my servant Job. Now, what did Job do right? Chapter 42, he repented. What did Job say right through the book of Job? He was honest. God, I'm sick and tired of living, and I want to die. Yet, in my flesh, I'll see my Redeemer. But I'm tired of this pain. I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of you guys. Man, he called them quacks. He said, you guys are fish issues of no value. God said, Job spoke was right. So Eliphaz the Temite, and Bill had the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namanite, now their name, went and did according to as the Lord commanded them, and the Lord accepted, the Lord accepted Job. And that's the last thing you read of Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And God, the Bible, the Holy Spirit records, God accepted Job. After Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar did and brought the, the bullocks and the rams and had Job pray for him, God's last recording of them I received of Job the acceptance. We don't go to glory. We don't go to millennium. We don't go to New Jerusalem praising ourselves. How great Billy Sunday was. How great Bob Jones Sr. was. How great this man that, that we read about Moody and all them. We don't go. It's not their acceptance. It's the acceptance of Jesus Christ. And when we get to New Jerusalem, we will all be praying and we will be all speaking. And we'll be all giving glory to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Listen, we're going to the millennium at the end of Job. And after the millennium, we, we, after the great white throne judgment, we go into New Jerusalem. And it's not about what Stiley Haber's done. It's not about what, what great men of the, of the church age. It's not even about what Paul has done. Everything Paul has done has been accepted through one man, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone. And that, listen. I had part in people getting saved. I had part in people growing. All those parts go to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and, that, and the Lord, now watch this word, churn the captivity of Job, and you'll find that in reference of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 and 3. This whole book has been Israel. Long before Israel's even been Israel. Well, I mean, take that back. Elihu was, yeah, okay, Israel's right. Uh, the T, uh, Eliphaz is uh, Esau, so, so yeah, I, I've been mistaken. So Israel, you have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You have Eliphaz, who's the son of Esau, grandson. So Israel's there. This whole book has been about Israel. Not in the Old Testament, not before the law, going all the way into the future, the period called the tribulation, when the Messiah comes. And when the Messiah comes, Job, Jesus, he's going to gather the remnant of the Israelites left. He's going to gather them together with the church 
and we're going to bring them in as Joshua brought them in. We're going to cross the Jordan River. We're going to go into the promised land like Joshua did. So when you read in the book of Acts and you read in the book of Hebrews that the modern Bibles are wrong, it is Jesus who's going to bring them in the land, not Joshua. That's why it reads like that. Jesus will follow the same route that Joshua and Moses did to bring him to the promised land. The law ain't going in. Moses ain't going in. Joshua, Jehovah saved, will bring them in. The captivity. When he prayed for his friends, also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Well, what happened to Eliphaz? What happened to Bildad? What happened to Zophar? You know, they were forgetting. They just go off into the celebration. There will be Gentiles that will go in the tribulation period. They go in there because they help the brethren of the Jews. Jesus said. Well, let's get right back to the people important. Job, type of Israel. Got twice as much as he got before. Do you realize when that when that Jew gets the promised land under Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, when he's sitting as king in Jerusalem on David's throne, you know what the Jews are going to get? They're going to get gardens with no weeds. The curse is gone. The only thing that retains the curse in the millennium is the serpent. He's still going to eat that dust. Everything else is going to be fruitful, wonderful, and just crops of the galore. And you read about Isaac when he's in Gerar. He said he, he a hundredfold reaping that year. Then came there unto him all his brethren. So if Job's the type of Jesus, all his brethren, guess who they are? Oh, he came on his own the first time, his own received them not. They're not going to reject him the second time, or they'll go off with, it, with the goats. And his sisters. Jesus had sisters. Are you going to go so far as to say that, you know, Jesus' sisters are going to be? I think so. You had more women follow Jesus than the men did. You had one brother, at least James. And all they that had been of his acquaintance before. The people that believed on Jesus and the people that walked with Jesus, some of them are going to be walking with Jesus in the millennium. There's a resurrection of the Old Testament saints after Jesus died. And eat bread. You will eat bread in the millennium. You will have food in the millennium. In heaven, I don't know. In his house. What's that house going to be? Gabriel told Mary, the house of David, the throne of David. And they bemoaned him. And comfort him over all the evil that the Lord had done upon him. Job, I mean, yeah, Job. Look what the Bible says, the evil that happened to Job. What is the evil? His sons died, his animals were killed, his animals were taken, they were stolen, and he got these boils, and his wife. Those are evil. And when the Bible says, God says, I create evil, this is an evil as a reference to an application of a man sinning, evil is not always sin. All right? You drink all your life, you go to the doctor, and the doctor says you got cirrhosis of the, kidney, of the kidney. That's evil. The sin is smoking, I mean drinking. When you go and smoke cigarettes and cigars and tobacco products, and you go to the, and to the doctor, he says you got lung cancer. The smoking, the tobacco is the sin, the evil is the lung cancer. And God created that. The wages of sin is death. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You do something stupid and you cut off your arm. What is the evil? You don't have an arm. And that says not that God creates evil, but what happens because of sin, whether God's trying to judge us, whether God's trying to chasten us, whether God's trying to get us right, what we do because of our sins. The consequences, that's the evil. It's never God making sin. So we read in Job and uh we read in Job chapter one and two. The devil said, Can I do this? The devil said, I want to do this, and God said, Yeah, but don't do that. 
Yeah, but don't do that. The devil did it, right? But God gave the devil permission. And the Holy Spirit says in chapter 42, all that was of God, even though the devil wanted to do it. And there are things with Christians, you know, you do wrong, you sin, the devil says, let me out. God's like, okay, go ahead. But, you know, he kind of, uh, 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 tongue in cheek, you know, he turns it, I'm doing it because it's for their good. He doesn't know that. The devil doesn't know that, but it's for their own good. I'm doing this. Devil walks off, yeah, I got him. God's like, it's going to help him. Just don't tell the devil. And listen, that's tongue in cheek speaking. That's why God does it. God said, okay, devil, go do it. Because I'm angry with him. <laughs> don't tell the devil, I'm angry with you. So we don't know who did it. The devil did it. Job 1 and 2. And Job 42. 42 chapters later, God did it. So when somebody says, I know, you don't know nothing. The things about people I, I look at, I say, you know, I, I know, I don't know nothing. I can only surmise. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And one, and every one an earring of gold. I don't know what that earring of gold had to do, but they gave him an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed, made happy, the latter end of Job. Take that to the count of Israel. What will the Jews be in the millennium? Oh, they'll be pleased. There'll be no more enemies of the Israel nation. Only when the devil's freed for that season, and he comes up with his army, and God says, you're gone. See you later. The Jews, the Bible says, be react. every man be sitting under his fig tree and just wonder and, and glory and, and just wonderfulness. The book pictures the Jew, the Jew in the tribulation, at the end of the tribulation. For he had 14,000 sheep, and this is all doubled. A thousand camels. And a thousand yoke of oxen, which would be two thousand, because a yoke of oxen are two. And a thousand she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters, the same. That didn't double. double. Where's his wife? She's absent. We don't know what happened. We, we can only guesstimate. Did she divorce him? Did she got not? But I mean, you got another picture of a wife like this. You got, uh, oh, Micah, the, the daughter of Saul, married to David. She, you know, David's out there. Oh, glory to God. Here comes the ark of the Lord. She's out there. That guy's a fruitcake. Look at him. Glory to God. And it, you don't read about her no longer. Who is the picture of Job's wife that would be in a tribulation period? Oh, Jezebel. Jezebel was not happy when she found out that Elijah took care of her prophets and killed them. That's okay, because Jezebel will go off into hell. And he, Job, called the name of the first Jemina, and the name of the second Kiza, and the name of the third Kapika. Kapika. Now, we don't know if these are the original names. But guess what? Guess what? I'll show you something. Uh, Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 verse 18. Now watch this. Watch the wording. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons, Job, your sons and daughters, were eating and drinking wine. In the elder's brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smoked the four corners of the house, and it fell upon a young man, and they are dead. They are dead. They are dead. Come back to where we chapter 42. He had seven sons and three daughters. Resurrection. Right now, the nation of Israel is dead to God. The salvation of the gospel goes to an individual Jew, but not corporate Jewish people. A Jewish person is able to get saved and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. At the second advent, the nation of Israel is resurrected. And they're given names. Job's children died and they're resurrected. In all the land, there was no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job. The Israelite daughters. 
And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren, and Job's a type of Jesus. What's the inheritance? The land. Even Joshua didn't give them that full inheritance that Jesus gave. Joshua gave them, and they didn't get rid of all the heathen. They didn't get rid of all the Gentiles. Jesus Christ will take care of that. Jesus Christ will get rid of all the goats in the land. A complete inheritance that Joshua didn't do will be done through Jesus. After this lived Job 140 years. After. He lived to be over 140 years old. And saw his sons, his son's sons, grandchildren, even to four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Now, you know what I don't see in Job chapter 42? Now, maybe you can read it. I don't see the boils going away. Show me chapter 42 where, where they go away. I mean, it doesn't say that about you. Now, everybody comes up and they're kissing them. They're loving Okay, maybe, maybe you can read that into it. Job never finds out what happened behind the scenes of Job 1 and 2. Job cannot sit down with his grandchildren and great grand say, Grandpa, what happened, Job? Well, let's open up the let's open up to my book, my book, children, chapter one. There was no book of Job. Grandpa, why did that happen to you? Well, God used it for his glory. I've sinned, and that's all Job can tell him. We are not told that Job is told about the spirit world. of the. I mean, he knew about the devil, but he didn't realize that he may not know that the devil went up and said, let me go, let me at him. But the Jewish people will have a complete, complete, complete new and old testament. They don't believe the new of their entire life as, as Jewish people. Job didn't have that. 